you're gonna see this this outfit in a lot of videos because I frankly it's cold and I don't feel like changing. <laughs> Hello book friends. I have a super, I hope it's super quick. Every time I say something is super quick, it isn't super quick, but I have a super quick video for you all. Uh, so hello book friends. Let's do the intro. Hello book friends. Welcome to the channel. Hello if you are new. I'm Alyssa. Let's talk about some books. If you follow along, you know that I recently went to Virginia, Maryland to see Naomi, my podcast co-host and good friend, uh, to go book thrifting, to unhaul some books, to just have like a great girls weekend. And on that trip, I had a couple books that I was looking for, a couple authors, a couple things that I was really looking for. And then of course I got a whole bunch of other stuff that I didn't really have on my list and I probably should have left behind, but I didn't. So it's here and I'm going to read them. But one of the things I have been looking for are books by Barbara Pym because I keep seeing her around as like this really beloved British author from like modern times. She wrote a lot of modern classics and I was been very curious to find out why people love this woman so much and why here in the US, maybe I haven't heard about her as much, but I finally found two copies of uh, Barbara Pym books out and about thrifting because I never see them. I don't think she has the same popularity here in the US that perhaps she has in the UK. So I don't know if like she's going to show up a lot in like my thrifting as a result. So when I found two books by her, I was, I was psyched. I was psyched and I could not wait to jump in to the world of Pym. So I started with Excellent Woman, which I've heard, I guess, now that I've read it, I've heard that this is like one of the best places to start with her writing. So good on me for actually doing that. And can I just tell you, I think I'm in love with Barbara Pym because this was such a like compulsively readable, fresh, fun, funny at times, observant, good time. The way that Pym writes these characters, they feel like so real. They feel like people that live in your, in your, in your neighborhood, in your village, in your town. They feel like you can go out into the street and you're going to meet these people and you're going to know these people. They're so incredibly real. And she sets place so nicely. So this is following, I'm going to get her name right, Mildred Lathbury. And she is this sort of spinster woman. She lives in an apartment in this sort of quaint area of London in the 50s. And so we're in austerity. It's post-war. It's a very interesting time in British history as well. She had been living with her friend and her friend has moved out. And now she's living by herself in this apartment where she has to share a bathroom with the other tenants, which she, she doesn't really like, but okay. Uh, she's mostly considered like an excellent woman, which so she's like that single woman, I'm gonna put this down, that single woman that's in the, that's very involved in the town. So she's gonna do like the jumble sales. She's gonna help at the school. Whatever you need, she's gonna do it. She is just involved in her community and she is she is there for the community to use to, to get things done, basically. She she will cook you a roast for the community dinner. She will she will sort your donations. She will apparently get herself absolutely wrapped up in the lives of complete strangers to the point where it's weird. But one day this couple moves in. She's basically living this very like quaint, not really interesting life, just going about her life. And one day this couple moves in and they're quite kind of glamorous in comparison. The wife is like an anthropologist and, she, and, and Mildred's like, I don't even know what that is, uh, which is just funny because explaining anthropology is, is funny. The way that that scene goes when they're trying to like explain what anthropology is to her is funny. And the husband is this military guy who's stationed in Italy. And when he finally does show up, Mildred's kind of got a crush on him. He's very charismatic. She gets very embroiled in their life and starts doing things for them that's very strange. There's other people that come in. There's this uh, widow who comes and really disrupts a lot of things with her her reverend friend. There's this Everand guy who I really wanted her to like fall completely head over heels in love with Everand. And that doesn't really happen, but I'm not actually mad about it because I also want Mildred to just remain independent and living her life, doing whatever makes her happy. It was just so 
fun watching how all these characters interact with each other and how they interplay and how Mildred observes life because she is she is our narrator and she is she is describing everything so you're in her head the entire time and her observations on life are often hilarious um you can also see how the women in these 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 books particularly somebody like mildred really runs everything in this community whether they get the credit for it or not that she's invaluable to keeping this community running and people use her almost thoughtlessly in a lot of ways. So there is this like tragic comedy about it as well because poor Mildred is just kind of being taken advantage of, I think, by some of these characters. But she does kind of take everything in stride and it's all rather lighthearted. But I just, I love the dialogue. I love the setting. I love the place. It makes you want to move there and, and interact with all these people. It's like watching any of those BBC shows that we as Americans absolutely love. Like, you know, you go sit down on PBS and you watch like Father Brown or like the new ones or Grantchester and like you want to be in these little towns in the 50s and like solving murders or whatever. Or maybe that's just me. I don't know. Maybe that's, that's my dream is to live in a little quaint English village and solve mur murders. But anyway, the long and the short of it is, because I don't want this to be a very long video, I love this and I need more Pim in my life. So I'm a little bit upset that I only found two of them because I only have an unsuitable attachment left to read, but I'm hoping to get to this very soon. I'm reading a bunch of other stuff as well right now. And I'm going to be having my little eyeballs peeled for other Pims because this was an absolute delight. And on the cover here, it says, written with the wit and style of a 20th century Jane Austen. And that's from Harper's Queen. At first, when I read that, I was like, nobody's Jane Austen. And okay, she's not Jane Austen. But if anybody that I have read from this kind of era is going to be given like, you are Jane Austen-esque, it's Barbara Pym. And I absolutely adored her, which given the comparison, should be no surprise to anybody who knows me. But I highly encourage people to read this if you're looking for a very relaxing read, a very interesting read. If you like getting into the nitty gritty of people's lives, I think it's fun. Like it's a gossipy read. If you want a gossipy read, get this book. I think it's a good gossipy read. N nosy, busy bodies all around, all around loved it. And it does touch on things like the austerity. They do talk a bit about like food and food prices. And so you do see some of that, but it's not like heavy handed in any way, shape or form. So it's not so much about like the struggles of the times in 1950s UK. It's much more about the people and how they interact with each other. And I down for it. Love it. So if you've read Barbara Pym, tell me your favorite Barbara Pym in the comments. If you find any deals, okay, and you live in the U.S. where I can pay you media mail, <laughs> let me know, okay? You are my eyes for more Pims in the thrifting, okay? Not new ones, thrifted Pims please. And thank you. That should do it. This should be a quick one. Thank you guys for watching. Like and subscribe and I'll see you in my next video, whatever it may be, because it's my channel and I can do whatever I want. Bye. So just sit with me, talking to the night until the morning, building cat mystery. I don't think I ever want to go come closer next to me, trying to find another way to say this, but I think, I think.